Welcome! In this video, we're going to use the test suite that you worked with in earlier modules alongside the Swag Labs app, which is available for your use on GitHub, to set up an example project in the GitHub Actions Continuous Integration tool. The first thing you'll need to do is copy all of your test code files into the app package. If you fork this repo, you're going to want to make sure that there's no .git directory in there. If so, you'll want to delete it. And we'll also want to check that there is a git ignore file where it lists all the files that you don't want publicly published when you create your own GitHub repo in order to use GitHub Actions. Once you have everything cleaned up, you can initialize a new Git repository. Another option you have for setting up your Cypress tests in your web app is to use the sawctl new command. This command will set up the Cypress files as well as the config YAML and sauce directory that you can otherwise copy and paste in. However, you will have to go in and manually update config YAML as well as the test files and any variables that might be stored in other directories. In this example, I'm using sawctl new. However, I'm not overwriting any of the test files that I copy and pasted into the test app package. The last thing we'll do with the app package is to go into the workflows directory, and this is where the workflows for GitHub Actions are kept. What we're going to want to do is create a new YAML file for the actions that we're going to create in order to build our app on GitHub and run our tests. And we're also going to want to rename the YAML files in there to .yaml.backfiles. This essentially archives those files so that when we commit this repo to GitHub, those two workflow files won't be run. Once your workflows directory looks like this, you're ready to move on and create a new GitHub repo where we can add in actions. In this example, what I've done is downloaded the app package file separately, and now I'm going to create a brand new repo in GitHub. If you created a fork of this, you can also just use that repository. Make sure it has a different name than sample web app, however, so if people are searching for the demo app, that they can find the one that they're supposed to be using and not use yours, which might be out of date. If you haven't already done an init, init within your app package file that contains the tests, and then you're going to add everything to the remote repository and push it for your initial commit. The last thing that you're going to need to set up on GitHub are the GitHub secrets for your sauce username and your sauce access key. It's best to use the naming convention that we would use, although it doesn't matter if it matches what's in your test code. In the Sauce Labs app, you can find your own username and access key, and you'll want to copy this and put that value in for your Sauce username, then do the same thing for your Sauce Access key. Once you have your secret set up, we'll go back into our test runner YAML file and start creating the structure for our first workflow. You should have created a testrunner.yaml file within the .github workflows directory, but if you haven't, create one now then open it up in your IDE. We're going to add in a couple sets of information. The first set of information will tell when this workflow runs, and the second one will be a set of environment variables that are used by all the jobs in this workflow. The first piece of information we're going to include in our workflow is the name of this workflow. Next, we're going to use the on GitHub event, which triggers the workflow. In this example, we're going to trigger our workflow anytime there's a pull request and anytime there's a push to the master branch. The next thing that you'll include are the environment variables. And when they're included at the top like this, they can be used by all the jobs that you'll create later in your workflow. Add in your sauce username and grab the value from GitHub Secrets. Then do the same thing for your sauce access key. The other environment variable that you want to add is the latest version of saucectl. You can check github.com slash saucelab slash saucectl to check the latest version, and we'll add in the build prefix too. In the next lesson, you'll be adding in your workflow jobs. Now you're ready to commit 
this first workflow to the new GitHub repository that you created. Add in your files and commit it. In the next lesson, we'll be showing you how to add in different kinds of jobs that will build and also run your tests within the GitHub Actions CI tool.